this book cover could snatch me. It could snatch every piece of hair off of my head. I would be a proud bald bitch. You know what I'm saying? What up my channel? Welcome back to another video. I'm Jessie and you're watching. I cannot imagine the last time, other than my Blackathon announcement video, which came out in February, I cannot remember the last time I was this excited to film a video. This video has been in the making for 10 months now, and I'm so freaking excited to bring it to you finally after 10 months of planning and trying to figure out how to execute it. And so this video is going to be the very first in a series that I am calling Bow Ties and Book Buzz. Where I give you all of the information about cover reveals, recently announced books, books that are being adapted, books that may not be on your radar, and also books that have recently won awards. And I'm just so freaking excited. Part of the reason why this video has not been out, even though I've been conceptualizing it for such a long time, is because I could not figure out what to name it. And recently I asked my patrons and they came up with Book Buzz and I really, really like it. I'm just absolutely obsessed. I'm so excited and we have a lot to get through. Like each of these categories has, I think, 15 minimum bits of information to for me to give. So I'm really excited to hop in. Like I used to when I when I first had my channel, I've been on YouTube, I think for four years. And my very first year of being on YouTube, I had this series where I talked about, you know, book community gossip. And I just like, I ended up privating those videos and stopped making them because I just didn't feel good about them. But I really wanted to replace them with something. And so I came up with this idea last summer and have been just like really excited and saving things and bookmarking. So some of this information is not going to be new per se. It'll be like November to up until February, which is the time that I'm filming this video. But the pieces of news that came out in like November, December that I'm sharing are still absolutely relevant information that may not have been circulated very well. But going forward from this point on like my next video, everything is going to be the news will be post February. So I'm really, really excited to talk about some very, very recent news and some news that have come out in the last few months. So without further ado, let us get into the video. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna talk about is our cover reveals. There are some amazing book covers that were recently unveiled and I'm so geeked to talk about them. The first book cover that we're going to be discussing is the Weight of Blood cover. This is Tiffany D. Jackson's latest book and the cover it's giving Carrie okay so this book releases in September and when I looked at this cover I like I followed Tiffany D. Jackson on Instagram and I looked at the cover and I had a feeling and then we looked at the cover artist and this cover was designed by none other than Jeff Manning. So Jeff Manning is my favorite illustrator. I have two pieces from him on my wall, on my walls, one's in my bedroom, one's in my living room. His pieces are expensive, which is why I only have two, but like I eventually want to have a wall dedicated to his art. I am obsessed with Jeff Manning. He is amazing. Like I've really enjoyed watching his growth over the years. He's just such a mind blowing artist, right? And I have had a dream. I was talking about this with Starla, because uh, I was like on stream, I think, with Starla when I found out about The Weight of Blood. I have a dream of having Jeff Manning illustrate the cover for my book. That has been my goal for like two years now, is writing a book and having him illustrate it. And so of course, of course, the queen Tiffany D. Jackson would beat me to it. This is the energy that I want for my book one day. I want him to do the cover and putting that out into the universe. And I, I cannot wait to read this book. <laughs> by Sara El Arifi. This is going to be published by Del Rey Books and it is the first in a trilogy. And the synopsis sounds so good. So we are following, I think, two individuals who are wrapped up in the Empire's toxic politics and they have to go into this trial by combat kind of situation, but only one of them can come out alive. Like it's that kind of vibe. I am so geeked for this. 
like literally cannot wait about this book and the cover is stunning. Then we have As Long As The Lemon Trees Grow by Zulfa Katu. This is an epic story set amid the Syrian revolution. Silvia Moreno Garcia dropped the cover for her new book, The Daughter of Dr. Moreau, and I'm really, really, really geeked about this. Although Silvia Moreno Garcia's books are very hit or miss for me, I, I keep, I'm always excited about them. And I think I've got good hopes for this. It's like that historical noir vibes and we're following a girl who has been like living a life of privilege and extravagance and her father is a genius and may or may not be a madman. Then Rachel Griffin dropped the cover for her new book. You'll probably know her as the author of um, A History of Witches, I believe. And this is the same vibe. Like I feel like you can tell it was done by the same illustrator. This is described as a hate to love woodsy story, which I am excited about it because I like books that are set in the wood. That is where I live. Like that is my happy place. Also involves magical animals and an animal companion that is an owl. <sighs> Look, mythical guides, animal guides are one of my top three tropes. Like I feel like my top three tropes are gods as characters going on a journey with an animal guide. And obviously like especially set in the woods. Then we have It Rides a Pale Horse by Andy Marino. This is a horror book and it sounds really good and really weird. The synopsis kind of isn't very descriptive, but I think it's about a man who rides a fiery horse. And when his sister is abducted, like he sees a live stream of her being abducted and this this mysterious figure, this man gives him a book and he has to follow everything that the book says or else his sister will be murdered. But the cover for Foul Lady Fortune by Chloe Gong. Take all of my money. It's giving pre-order. Just, I'm so geeked about this freaking book. It, it is set in the 1930s. <sighs> Like she is the queen of those historic noir vibes. And it is about a spy that is maintaining a false identity. Like I could not possibly be more excited about this book. Then we have the cover for the sequel to Keeper of Night, which is The Empress of Time. So this series is by Kylie Lee Baker. I think it might be a duology. I'm not utterly sure if it's a duology or a trilogy, but I'm very into this cover. And then we have the cover for We Are the Origin by CM Lockhart. This cover, this cover could murder me and I would say thank you as it was happening. This cover could smother me. The green, y'all know green is my favorite color. Obviously. This book cover could snatch me. It could snatch every piece of hair off of my head. I would be a proud bald bitch. You know what I'm saying? This cover, this shit right here. Oh, oh my gosh. The black girl magic, the green, it's giving, it's providing, it's paying bills. You know what I'm saying? And so this is following a queendom. The goddess of life and souls kind of forces our protagonist to abandon her queendom and fight an impossible enemy. Then we have Will Do Magic for Small Change. This is by Andrea Harrison. It is black science fiction fantasy and the cover is gorgeous. So this is published by Tor and the purple, the gold, that gold mask on the cover, the combination of colors is so freaking stunning. And this is from the author who wrote Master of Poisons, which I'm currently reading. Then the author of Hani Nishi's Guide to Fake Dating and The Henna Wars, Adiba Jaigardar, is coming out with a new book. It is a sapphic heist story set on the Titanic, where these four teenagers decide to steal something very expensive and very priceless aboard the Titanic. Is it a lifeboat? I cannot wait. I also had a dream about the Titanic last night because I have nightmares about drowning in the deep sea and I've had them ever since I was a child. Not me airing out my trauma. Then we have How to Excavate a Heart. This is another YA sapphic contemporary, but it is Jewish and it is set at Christmas time. I think the cover is so cute and cozy. Like you wouldn't know automatically that it's set at Christmas and I'm so freaking geeked. But this cover, Jay-Z Cervantes's Lord of Night. which is a Rick Riordan Presents book. This cover snatched me and we get Bruja Magic. As y'all may or may not know, I started a series last year on my channel called Batty Brujas where I read and review the representation of Brujas, Brujos, Brujics peoples. And unfortunately, I just don't, I'm not able to find a good wealth 
of Bruja narratives. And so I am really, really, really excited about this one. The cover for Play Like a Girl is so cute. It is so freaking cute. I'm automatically into it. I hate that I am such a sucker for YA contemporary sports romances, but I am, especially if they are queer. Graphic memoir, and I'm just so freaking geeked about it. And then the cover for A Taste of Magic by JL dropped and my jaw dropped. She is the author of Wings of Ebony and she's going to be making her middle grade debut. I feel like she's going to write so well within middle grade and I'm I'm geeked. Jesse Q. Sutanto recently released two cover reveals and both of them are so good. The one that I'm the most excited about is her middle grade debut. This is called Theo Tan and the Fox Spirit and I don't want to know anything about this book because the cover is all I need to know. The vibrant colors, the way that everything, just the illustration, all of it. It is absolutely perfect and it is the book that I need. She also is releasing a, a romance book set in Indonesia. The cover is literally so freaking cute. I also forgot to mention that Theo Tan received dozens of rejections and it ended up going up to auction and I'm just so so proud and happy for her. But the final cover reveal that I'm going to be talking about in this video is for one of my most anticipated releases. It is by Lamar Giles. When I saw this cover, enter cover. When I saw this cover, I was on stream with Starla and my reaction was so extreme that they were like, I can't tell if you like or dislike the cover because I was like wheezing. I almost fell out of my chair. I freaked out. The sound that came out of me is not a sound that should ever come out of a living being. <sighs> this cover. Wow. Wow. Jordan Peele. It's giving my future. It's giving kill me and I'll thank you for it. Wow. It looks so good. So this is a, a book that is set at a resort and y'all know I love that black vacation trope. I did an entire video on black journey tropes. This is this is different, but I feel like this still totally counts for the trope. But anyway, the apocalypse hits and our protagonist is working at this resort and they have to take in this group of people, wealthy people that are all incredibly cruel and incredibly rich and they all expect five star service with a smile. It's giving claustrophobia, it's giving like get out i am so it gives me like the platform if y'all have seen that netflix horror movie which is amazing it's a brilliant film there's a good amount of really popular movies that were extremely well done that kind of give social commentary on class like the purge you have parasite oh the vibes it sounds so good oh i forgot there's one more cover i have to talk about the illumicre reveal for atlas six this cover I need, like, I was not planning on, I was planning on getting this book for my library, but this is my favorite of all of Illumicrate's covers. The planets on the side, on the pages, wow, like, I desperately need this book. I desperately require it. It is so gorgeous, like, the celestial vibes. It looks entirely different from what I would have assumed they would have done, but it's beautiful. <laughs> Okay, so now we're going to talk about some books that may or may not be on your radar as well as recent awards that have been bestowed upon certain books. So the first book I want to talk about is Blood Sign number one. This book releases on March 8 from Harper Teen and it is about a descendant from the Orisha gods and it is by a Nigerian author and I could not be more excited about this book. I'm not seeing hype for it. So that's what some of these books are going to be just books that have been kind of getting passed over in the public booktube consciousness. And we have Breathe and Count Back to 10, which is about a Latinx teen with hip dysplasia who is auditioning to be a mermaid, and that comes out on May 10th. Probably the one that I'm the most excited about is Onyeka and the Academy of the Sun. This is described as Black Panther meets X-Men. It is a black girl with magical hair. Wow. The loaded symbolism. Wow. As somebody who is raised uh, to be very ashamed of their natural hair, so many black kids grow up with the shame and this is placed extra heavily on the, the shoulders of black girls and I'm so excited for this book. 
That one comes out in June of this year. Then we have Love Times Infinity. Again, a cozy sports romance. Y'all know that I'm a sucker for them. And this is between a shy teen and a basketball star. In terms of kind of bookish awards, so The Witch King by H.E. Edgman officially earned out and I am so proud and so excited for the author. Then I want to bring some attention to Black Stars number two, which Neri Okorafor is authoring. This is a short story and it uses Jin mythos to comment on terrorist burning books. The cover is stunning and I can't wait for the content. Nidio Okorafor is so good at social commentary while still weaving a really entertaining narrative. Like I literally can't wait for this and I haven't heard anybody talk about it. Non-binary author Alex Manley is releasing a book called The New Masculinity, How to Be a Man in a World That Hates Men. And it is about being a man and unpacking your gender and how to embody masculinity in a way that is healthy and non-toxic in a way that creates better futures. And I'm very, very excited on this social commentary. Kweke Amezi's Dear Centran just won the Ala Stonewall Prize for Nonfiction 2022. And the picture that they released on Instagram where they're just cheesing like so happy made me, ex it gave me euphoria. It gave me spiritual euphoria all of the way. And finally, Darcy Little Badger became the first native person to receive recognition from the Newberry Committee, which has, the award has been running for a hundred years. And she received it for A Snake Falls to Earth, which is my favorite out of her two books. It is brilliant. It is one of my all time favorite middle grades and it deserves all of the accolades. <laughs> Next up, we have our adaptations section. There are 19 adaptations that I have to get through, so I'm gonna go kind of fast. The cast for On The Come Up was released and Brie is perfect. She is perfect. Malik is perfect, perfect, okay? Perfect in every single way. I could not possibly be more excited for this film. Then we have Lakeith Stanfield is set to star in the adaptation of The Changeling by one of my favorite authors, Victor Laval. Victor Laval is one of the most underrated authors in the entire world. He wrote The Ballad of Black Tom, which I've been raving about for years. He wrote Destroyer, which I've been raving about for years. He is amazing. Such a powerful storyteller, like brilliant horror noir. I cannot wait and Lakeith Stanfield is my cis boy crush. I have such a crush on him. I'm not even sure why. And he's such an amazing actor. I love how weird he is. I just, I cannot wait. Like I know he is going to slay. So that will come out on Apple TV in 2023. And Melina Matsuokas is directing and she is absolutely amazing. And for those of you who are not familiar with this story, it is essentially about this man who is searching for his missing wife and child who may or may not have be changelings. And this is news that you may or may not know, but Binti is being adapted on Hulu. Binti, of course, by Dr. Neri Okorafor. And then Who Fears Death, also by Neri Okorafor, is being adapted as well. And we're all very, very excited about that. Red, White, and Royal Blue is also receiving an adaptation that will be made by Amazon Studios with Matthew Lopez making his directorial debut. As you probably know, Love Boat Taipei is getting an adaptation and it is so deserved. I feel like Love Boat Taipei is one of the most underread books on booktube. This of course is a Taiwanese YA debut and it is amazing. Like my favorite love triangle, even though I don't like love triangles. And this is coming out from Lionsgate and it is filming in Taiwan. Beasts of Prey released new gorgeous covers. Gorgeous covers. Okay, these covers could do no wrong. But most importantly, it is set to be adapted by Netflix and is one of the few books that received news for adaptation before the book itself was even released. Blackout is also receiving an adaptation from the Obamas. This is a YA anthology of stories of black people, black kids falling in love during a New York City power outage. And we have Tessa Thompson who is set to produce Raven Leilani's Luster. Again, this is a wildly underrated book on booktube. It is an adult story following a messy black girl. She's a struggling young artist and she is disabled and she ends up moving in with her sugar daddy 
and his wife and it is a very dark contemporary soft thriller. Then we have the adaptation for The Three Body Problem by Shishin Liu which MCU's Benedict Wong is going to be in and that is going to take place on Netflix. Tiffany D. Jackson's White Smoke was optioned for TV and I cannot wait. Like Oh, can you imagine if Jordan Peele directed? Can you imagine if Tiffany directed or wrote for? I just, wow, that's gonna be really freaking good. And of course, if you are unfamiliar, White Smoke is a YA horror haunted house meets Get Out book, and it's really, really good. The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue is also getting an adaptation. This is a beloved booktube book, and I know so many people are really geeked about it. Another booktube beloved book is Children of Blood and Bone, which Paramount Pictures has landed the rights to. Tomi Adeyemi will be writing and producing the film, which is so exciting. She has also announced that book three is near completion and will come out in 2023. Soul Street has optioned the rights to Want and Ruse YA SFF books and I haven't read them but the covers have made me want to read them for so long. This is by author Cindy Pon and I am like they have skyrocketed to the top of my TBR. It is a YA sci-fi dystopian that is set in Taipei and I'm really hoping that they film in Taipei. And Percy Jackson and the Olympians is set to be adapted by Disney. This will be on Disney+. Plus. I'm not interested in the series, but I know it is such a beloved series and maybe I'll get into the books for the adaptation. I just have this weird feeling that the series isn't gonna be for me, that maybe it's something I just missed the mark on, like something you had to read as a kid, but we'll see. One of the pieces of news that I'm the most excited about is that Ivory Aquino is set to be the first trans person to appear in a DC movie and she is going to be acting on Batgirl as a bartender. Actually I think that might be a TV show. I cannot remember. I think it's a TV show not a film. Maybe it's a film. I don't know. Don't listen to me. Pachinko is also getting a TV adaptation. I find it really interesting that this is going to be on television and not a film. Those of you who have read Pachinko, let me know in the comment section down below if you would have preferred this to be a movie instead of a TV show. I have not read this yet, but I want to read it in May so badly. Olga Dies Dreaming, one of my new favorite books, is being adapted on Hulu. The author, Zochito Gonzalez, is going to be writing and Jesse Williams is going to be starring in it. And I'm confused about Aubrey Plaza's role. Plaza was originally supposed to star in it too, but I think she might have been replaced. I'm not sure. I just, the cast looks really, really good. I absolutely loved this book. And with the author writing, I feel like it's going to be so good. Crying in H Mart by Michelle Zahner is also getting an adaptation. This is such a bookstagram beloved book that I unfortunately have not read yet and I want to get to it soon. This is a memoir and it is supposed to be amazing. Everybody cries when they read it. Like, I cannot wait to get my hands on this. This is getting adapted by Orion Pictures. And then the final adaptation that I have for y'all by Kristen Hanna, which of course is like a really beloved war historical fiction novel. The thing that I'm the most excited about for this is that it is going to star Elle and Dakota Fanning. I love Dakota Fanning. I have ever since I was a kid. Like I grew up with her movies. I am so freaking geeked to see what they do with this. Like their performances I just know are gonna be amazing. Lastly, we have 14 book announcements to get through. So I'm really excited to talk to you about these books. <laughs> Jude Saves the World is a middle grade by a non-binary author about a 12 year old who is struggling at an all girls prep school. This is in the wrong section, but whatever. Amazon required the rights to Book of Love, which is a book about this struggling American writer. His books never sell well. And he goes to Mexico and finds that his book is a huge hit because the woman who did the audiobook for it turned it into erotica. Adrian Tooley announced a sapphic YA duology that is supposed to come out in 2023. Chloe Gong is going to be making her adult debut with Immortal Longings in November. This is 1990s set in Hong Kong. Where certain people have the ability to possess the bodies of others and they are forced to fight each other. 
and I'm so excited. A group of Gen Z authors got together and wrote an anthology about the lives of college aged YA folk. This is called Study Break and it closed with a six figure deal and our very own Raquel Marie is one of the authors. So I'm really, really excited about this. Then we have Leah Johnson making her middle grade debut. This book is called Ellie Engel Saves Herself. It's about finding your own queerness. It's supposed to be superhero meets babysitter club vibes and that sold in an 11 house auction which is absolutely insane and we all know that Babel by RF Kuang is coming out this year but you may or may not know that RF Kuang recently announced Yellow Face which was purchased in a mid six-figure deal. This comes out in 2023 and it is about the way that Asian Americans are erased in literature and throughout history. So you may know Cameron Garrett as the amazing YA author of Disclosure, which I'm in the middle of and loving. And she has recently announced that in 2023, she has a YA rom-com coming out. This is called Friday, I'm in Love. And it's about a teen who decided not to have a sweet 16. Instead, she's gonna have a coming out party, but she is responsible for keeping her household financially afloat. And she's also like trying to fund this party. And then in the midst of all of this, she starts to fall in love. And Cameron Garrett is really, really good at writing like hard hitting, heavy hitting contemporaries. So I feel like this is going to be a really good heavy hitting book that also has some beautiful queer levity. Our own India Hill Brown is releasing another book. This is going to be her YA debut and it is called Rhythm and Muse. I am so excited. This is about a black boy who writes a song to his crush who has a podcast and the song ends up being entered into this competition for the intro song for the podcast and it's about what happens from there. This sounds really, really good. Kylie Lee Baker announced a two book deal for a YA fantasy series, and that is gonna be releasing in 2023. It is called The Scarlet Alchemist, and it's Tang Dynasty meets Full Metal Alchemist. <sighs> and it's got a biracial protagonist. I could not be more excited. And then one of my favorite authors, Carmen Maria Machado, announced a new freaking anthology. The anthology is called A Brief and Beautiful Star and it's going to be a collection of stories about the lives of people who were disrupted when this alien object touched down in their town. And it sounds so freaking good. This book was acquired by Knopf. Another book that was recently announced that I could not be more excited about is When the Hibiscus Falls. This is a Filipino, Filipina, Filipinix short story collection that is going to be published by Coffee House Press. Kasoko Jackson announced a paranormal dark academia thriller. It is called The Forest Demands It's Due and I cannot wait for the cover and this is slated to be published in 2023. And the very last book announcement that I have for this video is that Melinda Salisbury announced a modern day take on the Hades and Persephone myth. It is called Dark Wings and I cannot wait. Just gorgeous. Like that is going to be amazing. I, I just know it's going to be incredible. In the comment section down below, let me know what you are the most excited about out of everything that we have talked about in this video. If you want to show me that you made it this far in the video, why don't you leave a microphone emoji? Because this is book buzz. If you want more content from me, I do have a Patreon where I make exclusive videos for my patrons. One of my last videos was shit that book reviewers say that gets on my last nerve. This this month's video is going to be me doing a bullet journal flip through for my 2022 reading journal. But all my social media links are in the description box below. If you want to check me out, make sure your notifications are on. Thank you for watching Avotize and Books production, and I hope to see you in my next video.